Hey guys, today we are talking all about the public transportation in the UK. Now something you should know about the public transport in the UK is honestly, it's incredible. Now, is it perfect? No, absolutely not. And it will depend which part of the UK you settle in, in terms of how reliable or how much public transport there is. Because there are certainly parts of the UK where using the public transport gets a little bit tricky. But overall, as a Canadian, I absolutely love the public transport here and please make use of it. Now, first up, let's talk about the trains. So getting around by the train is one of the most popular modes of transportation here. I know lots of people who have never gotten their driver's license quite simply because they can get around without it. And the trains play a huge role in that. Now, depending on where you settle in the UK, you may have a different rail provider. Here where I am in the Southeast in Kent, we have Southeastern. Now in terms of buying tickets, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either show up to the train station. You typically will have a kiosk, so you can plug in where you want to go, what type of ticket you want. You can then pay for your ticket through the kiosk and it will print them out. Or sometimes, 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 some stations will actually have like a clerk working the ticket counter. So there are been instances where I've not really known what kind of ticket I need, but I need to go someplace and I've asked them and they've basically said, you're gonna need this ticket, it's gonna be this much, whatever. Not all stations will have a clerk though, so something to keep in mind. Now, personally, I never buy my tickets that way anymore because I buy all of them through Trainline. Now, this is definitely not sponsored, but I love Trainline. It is a third-party app and I buy all of my train tickets through them. So you can either use Trainline through the website on your computer or they have a really, really great app. So basically, I will book the tickets through Trainline, pay for them through Trainline. I will go to the station, I will use the kiosk and plug some information in and they will print off the tickets that I've already bought and I'm good to travel. Now, I think the train is one of the best methods of transport here in the UK. They can get you tons of places. It's, it's almost shocking how well you can get around on the train, but do keep in mind that it does start to get expensive. So with that, I would definitely recommend checking out if you can get a UK rail card. I have a video on my channel all about how to get a UK, UK rail card and what it is, but essentially you basically get a good discount when you buy tickets. So where train tickets can get quite expensive is really helpful to have a rail card to get some discount back. And it's definitely not uncommon to take the train a town over, maybe two towns over, maybe you only take the train for 10 minutes to get to the next town. That is something that is part of my life now as an expat in the UK. Maybe I wanna meet up with friends. I literally will hop on the train for like two or three stops, go to a cafe, meet up with friends, and then come home. It's just a really great way to get around, but it is not free. So get that rail card so you can get some discounts. Another thing to keep in mind with the train are printed tickets or electronic tickets. So. Lots of places in the UK are starting to transition over to QR code readers. Now what that means is um, traditionally you would have a paper ticket. So you have a little printed ticket that you feed through the barrier or the turnstile at the station, then it opens and you can go through and you can get the train. And then you would typically do the same thing when you leave the station on the way out. Now a lot of stations still operate this way. Certainly in Kent they are, but there is a movement towards having barriers at the station that can read QR codes. So rather than having to get your printed tickets or your tickets printed, rather than having hard copy paper tickets, you would get a QR code on your phone, which then you can scan at the barrier and go through. So it saves you having to queue up to print tickets. It also saves you having to carry around these little paper tickets because there have been plenty of instances where I have lost my paper ticket and it's super annoying. So definitely keep that in mind. Where you live in the UK might have these QR code readers, which make life just a little bit more simple. If you don't have them yet, you will need to print your tickets as normal. Another great way to get around the UK is with the buses. Now I relied on the local buses 
for my commute to work for years, really. Um, I would take two buses to work and I'd take two buses home. And while it can be a little bit annoying, it's actually pretty convenient. Like the trains, you're gonna have to find what your local bus provider is. Here in Kent, it is a company called Arriva, but they do also operate in different parts of the UK. So you may have Arriva as well. Now the buses are a great way to get around, especially for shorter distances. Um, maybe you don't need to go a town away, but you just need to get to the other side of your town. So there are a lot of bus routes here in the UK. It is a great way to get around and it's usually pretty reasonable priced. Now back when I first moved to the UK, the buses were cash only, which was honestly horrible. But thankfully in the last few years, a lot of the bus companies have been transitioning to contactless payment. Thank God. <laughs> it's so much easier. So typically now a lot of these buses will allow you to buy tickets through their app or when you board the bus and you want to buy a particular ticket, you can do that through a contactless payment before you had to have exact change and you hand over your coins while you're on the bus. So it was always very stressful. And some buses still have that, but a lot of them are changing over to contactless. At least for my situation, when I was commuting with Arriva, they also offered different types of tickets. So rather than paying per journey, because I was using the bus every day, Monday to Friday in the mornings and at nights, I actually got a monthly ticket. So that allowed me unlimited journeys within a certain region. So I would buy my monthly ticket and then I could use that for my commute for the 30 days and then I would buy another one. So that was way more convenient. You also end up saving some money because you're just doing that one lump sum rather than paying for each individual ticket. So if you are going to use the bus for commuting, it's definitely something to look into. Next up, another way you can get around the UK is with taxis or Ubers. Now I've had success with both of these types of taxi and taxi alternatives, um, but it does depend where in the UK you are. If you live in a very small remote village, it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult to find an Uber. But if you live in a town, even like a small to mid-sized town, I have had success getting Ubers before. Now what I would recommend is create a Uber profile. So you have it ready on your phone, should you ever need it. It's all like you have an account, it's like signed up, everything's good to go just in case you ever do need it. But I would also save some local taxi numbers into your phone should anything happen and maybe you can't get data or Wi-Fi to you know Google a local number, you have them saved on your phone just in case. Now I personally prefer Uber because I really like that you can see how much it's gonna cost and you sort of lock in that price and, and you don't have to worry about that so much. And of course you can then pay through the Uber app. I have done it before with taxis where, you know, it's the classic meter, the meter is running and then at the end you have to give them all your cash. Like buses, a lot of taxis are now going to contactless payment. So that is helpful, but not all of them. So before you get in and start your taxi journey, just make sure to ask whether they accept cash only or they will take a card payment. Because you don't wanna to get to your destination and they say it's cash only and you don't have any on you. Next up, we have bike rentals. Now this is something that's gotten more popular in the last few years, especially in the bigger cities, but even in some of the towns, you will see them where there will be like a stack of bikes that you can rent out. You like check out the bike, you can use it for however long and then you can check it back in. Something to keep in mind if you want to get around your town or city, but you want to also get some exercise, it's certainly an idea. Now, public transport in London gets its own section. Now, London is an absolute beast of a city, but to be completely honest, they have the best public transport I have ever used. And a great point about public transport in London is that 99.9% is cashless. So much of the public transport is contactless, um, tap in, tap out type stuff. So you almost never ever need to worry about coins or the correct change or carrying cash. It just makes it so much more easier. Now, when talking about public transport in London, a lot of people bring up Oyster cards. Maybe you've heard that term before. They are basically smart cards that you can load money onto and then you can use them 
throughout transporting yourself around London. Um, it's basically like a contactless smart card. And while those may be good for foreign travelers or you're here uh, on holiday or a vacation and you don't have a UK bank account so you can load up one of these cards with the local currency, it's not super helpful for people who actually live in the UK or travel into London often. Because realistically, it makes more sense to use your own UK bank account contactless card than getting an Oyster card, loading it up with money, and then using that. So for me personally, when I visit the city, I just use either my debit card or really I have my payment cards on my phone and so much of it is tap in, tap out. So it's just extremely convenient. However, for the buses, now typically buses are only tap on because there's a fixed fee. So when you get on the bus, you see like a big yellow button usually. You tap in to show that you are using the bus. You don't typically need to tap when you get off. But for a lot of things like the tube, there will be a barrier. So you tap in to get through the barrier and then you will tap off or tap out when you leave. So your rate of your journey can be calculated. There's also lots of bus services and even tube services that operate nearly 24 hours. So if you are out late at night, it is still typically possible to get home, which is great. Just make sure to check your route before you stay out too late and you miss that final bus. Nobody likes to be that person that misses the final bus home or that final train. I will also recommend if you commute to London, it can be very expensive. Um, perhaps you live in Kent. A lot of people who live in Kent commute into London for work. Prices to live in London are very expensive, so some people prefer to live in Kent where it's a bit cheaper and commute in. Either way, definitely talk to your employer because they may actually be able to offer you some like financial assistance to go towards the commute. So I know some employers will pay all or part of your like commuting costs. Um, some don't, but I think it's definitely worth asking. I will say though that the public transport in the UK is something special. I used to drive, so I did have a car here for a couple of years, and of course driving makes things very easy, but I have been carless for the last three years, two years, and I've done just fine. It is possible to get around without it. It's a little bit more difficult and you do obviously need to like plan routes and times and all that kind of stuff, but it is possible to live without a car and to rely on the public transport, which is pretty special. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I would also recommend checking out this video where I cover all of the most important apps that all expats need. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.